Hello, my name is Kelly Bluen. I am a certified Zen Tangle teacher. Welcome to 15 Minutes of Zen. In these videos, I show you how to draw one tangle pattern using the Zen Tangle method of drawing. Today, I'm using my Micron pen. This is a PN plastic nib pen. I have a graphite pencil for some drawing and shading and a blending tool called a tortillon. Also using my little paper tiles. These are two inch by two inch paper tiles called the Bijou tiles. And all of these supplies are available on Zentangle.com or you can just use whatever you have on hand. Okay, so today's tangle is called Casual, created by this certified Zentangle teacher. And it is number 28 in our Inktober series where we try to draw a tangle every day for 31 days. So we are on day 28. At the end of this video, I'm gonna add this tangle, casual, to a larger compilation piece that I have that has the first 27 tangles already on it. Okay, let's get to casual. So this is one of those tangles that is really unique. Um, it's not like anything we've really done before, which I absolutely love but it also takes a little bit of practice. I feel like this Inktober, we have had some tangles that are not, um, not simple, that just take a little bit of work, and that's okay. It's good to have a challenge, but um, try not to get discouraged if this one is tricky. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna begin by putting a little pencil dot in each of the four corners, and I'm gonna connect those dots, creating a little square on my paper like that and then because um this is an instructional video and i'm trying to teach you how to do this i am going to place a grid on this paper when i draw it the next time i probably will not do a grid but i just want to help you line things up so i'm going to add a line across the center and a line down the center and then I'm gonna put an X in each of these boxes. I'm doing it very light so that I can erase it when I'm done. This will just help us place things. All right, let's pick up our pens and get going. All right, I'm gonna use this top corner. I'm gonna put a little dot in that corner and I'm going to be creating a rectangle and I'm gonna use that dot as the center of my rectangle. So my rectangle is going to go like that. And compared to my pen, you can kind of see about how wide it is. I'm gonna put a dot right here and that is gonna be the center of my next rectangle. And that little dot in the corner there is going to be the center of my third rectangle. Now we want these to be big enough that we can go back and add a line through the center. Okay. Then we're gonna do three more across the middle. So I'm gonna put a dot right in that corner there and that's going to be the middle of this rectangle. And I can go ahead and add my line. I'm gonna put a dot there. Draw a rectangle and a line and a dot on the edge. Again, using that dot as the center of my rectangle. All right, one more set across the bottom. Placing my dot, I'm gonna put all my little dots in. So one at each corner and one in the center. Then I draw my rectangle around that. Okay. 
there we go we should have nine rectangles um, with little lines in the middle of them all right now I'm gonna place a dot in the middle of each of those X shapes and I'm going to do a rectangle around that We did it. So you can see why I made the grid. Although all you really need to do is just start putting some across and then just make sure you put one in the middle of each set of four. Okay, I'm gonna grab an eraser and I'm going to erase these pencil lines. Just don't really need those on there now. Okay, so now here comes the kind of tricky part, but I know you can do this. I know you can do it. All right, I'm gonna grab my scrap paper real quick. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take each of these little rectangular sections, draw them kind of big and messy right now. See, I didn't even need a grin. And we're gonna make a line that goes from the middle of this one to the top of this one. So I'm just gonna make this like curvy S shape. So middle to the top. Then I'm gonna aura it from the bottom to the middle. Okay, like I said, it might be a little bit tricky. And then middle to the top bottom to the middle and it ends up being like this little pipe or little ribbon going through there okay let's begin so I'm gonna go up to this very first one and I'm gonna go from this side of the middle to the top of this one so I'm just gonna make this little rounded S shape it's a backwards S and then I go from the bottom to the center. Then I go from the middle to the top, bottom to the middle. Middle line to the top, bottom to the middle. Middle to the top, bottom to the middle. Okay, now we're going to use this set to connect to the next row. So we're going to go middle to the top, bottom to the middle, middle top, bottom, middle, middle, top, bottom, middle, middle, top, bottom, middle. There you go. There you go. That's casual right there. That's all you need to do to make casual. Now, of course, I doubled it because I wanted us to kind of get into that rhythm. So we're gonna to go to this next set and we're gonna go middle top, bottom middle. Middle top, bottom middle. Even the ones that aren't perfect look amazing.
Look at that. We did it. See how setting up that little grid was helpful? But look at how cool that looks. Isn't that so different than anything we've made so far? I really like it a lot. All right, I'm going to draw a square or a frame connecting those. Connecting down this. You don't have to connect those if you don't want, but you can. And then if you wanted to play around with this, you can add little designs or patterns or just darken them in or add color inside these little ropes that twist through. Or you could add some patterns and texture to the background. What a fun one to play with. All right, we're gonna do some shading. I'm gonna put my initials on the bottom. And grab my graphite pencil. And this one, I wasn't exactly sure how I wanted to shade it. So I think what I'm going to do is I don't know. I think I'm going to like imagine these are like little pipes and these come out of them. So I'm going to put a little shadow on the end of each of these little pipes or these little rectangles. And then I can push that away from there and away from here. And that gives it that slight illusion that there's a shadow being created as it goes inside those. So just a tiny bit on the outside edges of those rectangles. And I just push that away from those little rectangles. Like that. I'm also going to add graphite all along the inside of my frame. just to give the illusion that this whole thing is kind of tucked in behind that frame. Push this up and away, in towards the center. Like that. It would also be fun to add shading like in and around every single little loop, but I feel like that would take a long time. So. I like this. I like the um, the simplicity. Like it looks simple, but yet it's very complicated to make. <laughs> okay, I hope that you like that one. That's called casual. And then we're gonna add it to our larger compilation piece. Now, the problem is, is that I did not really plan, and um, I don't know if I've got a big enough spot to put this. So here's my piece that's got the first 27 tangles already on it. I know if you're just tuning in, this is one of your first videos you're watching, it looks completely overwhelming. But that's because I've been working on it for 27 days. So um, don't, don't think that like I just sat down and created this, okay? It is literally one line at a time. So now I've got this new one called Casual, and I want to put that in somewhere. But I also know I have three more tangles to add, and I feel like two of them are, I, I can't remember, I think they're kind of like a florals, a kind of bigger, so I want to use some big space. So maybe, oh my goodness, maybe I will try to put it 
in this area. This was like day four or five that I created this little empty space with no idea with how I was going to fill it. But I think that might be where it could go up here. I legitimately never have a plan. All right, we are going to challenge, or I'm going to challenge myself to fit it in here. So, um, you know, one of the things with this compilation piece is that I want to show you that every tangle that we draw can be added to a piece of art. So they don't always have to be done individually. All right, so I'm going to just sort of imagine um, this being that top line, this being the bottom line, like of a section, and then I'll add some little pieces in here. This looks and sounds complicated, but I think we can do it. Okay. Okay, we're just gonna try. So I'm just gonna draw a center line through here. And of course it's not perfectly even, and that's okay. That's what's gonna make this fun, I think. All right, and then I'm going to put in some lines of like little grid. Okay, and then I can use each of those as a place to put um, one of my rectangles. Okay. And then maybe, maybe I'll put an X in there too. I was not gonna draw a grid, but I'm not sure how to draw this without it. So I'm gonna place X's. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I feel like I'm making this really, really complicated. But you remember the drill. We add like our little dot here. And I'm gonna put in a rectangle with a line. And at my next point here, I'm gonna put in a rectangle with a line. I'm grab a different pen. Still using my PN. Um, and right here at this intersection, I'm gonna put in my rectangle with my line. This could be the tangle that ruins this whole piece. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We'll make it work no matter what, but I am feeling a little bit nervous about this. Okay, and then because I drew in these little pencil lines, I'm gonna put my rectangles at the bottom of each of those lines. This one's way over here. This one's way over here. And I'm just guessing. I mean, this one's kind of small. That one's kind of big. That one's kind of hidden. It doesn't matter. And I'm going to use the middle of my X to make my last row. That little middle row. In between four, we need a center one. In between four. So find my little X. Find my little X. Maybe you found a better spot on your paper to put this. You know, and it could always be done too with just, like if I did it right here, I could just put one, two, three, four, and one in the center and just do one set of loops. It doesn't have to be big. Okay. So then I also have a little X over here, so that needs a center one. Okay, so here's my little set of five. One, two, three, four, five. So I begin in the middle, end at the top. Middle, top, bottom, middle. Okay, then I go to this one. 
middle to the top, bottom to the middle. I go to the next one. Middle, top, bottom, middle. Middle, top, bottom, middle. Some of these are longer, some of them are shorter because I'm doing it on an angle. Middle, top, bottom, middle. Wow, I think it's kind of working. And then over here, this one would just kind of, I don't know, we're just gonna pretend it goes down over there. And I gotta do this one over here, middle, top, bottom, middle, and then this one would probably loop around up there. So I did that first little row. Now I'm gonna do the row underneath. Whew. So these ones are kind of hidden, so I just have to remember, like look at where I'm going. I'm going to go middle to top, bottom to middle. Middle to top, bottom to middle. This one's really far away. That's okay. I just have to look at where I need to land. In my head, I'm saying middle, top, bottom, middle. If you're confused, maybe watch Barbara Langston's videos. She's on Not Perfect Zen. She usually explains things really well. Okay, so I do have that pattern. I don't know if I love it here. I've got kind of a wiggly, wobbly thing going on. But I did it, I fit it in there, and um, now I'm going to add some little decorations to it. So I'm going to take these little um, ropey things, and I'm just going to put some lines in there. I'm skipping over those rectangles. But adding them all the way through. And then I'm gonna do, oop, I needed one over here. Put some little lines this way. That just gives it some texture. I think that was all of them. Okay, this one right here, if it kept going, it would have had one down there. So I'm gonna add a little bit. And this one would have had one down there. I feel like that's the most confusing one that I have placed for you guys, and I apologize. But um, part of this is just going with the flow and hoping things work out. So I'm going to go ahead and leave it for a minute, and I'm going to do a little bit of shading. But first, I need to get rid of all those grid lines that I drew. They're kind of distracting. I'm going to zoom out just so we can take a peek at that. Okay, so see how it really looks kind of cool in there? I mean, really, I kind of like it. I am going to go back. No, I'm not. I was going to add a little a section on top of each one, but I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, so there it is. I'm going to leave it kind of empty for now and just do a little bit of shading. So for my shading on this one, instead of shading each little um, rope because I textured them, I'm going to shade around the outside 
of the entire thing. So I'm just gonna go very quickly and add like a little pencil line like that. And then I'll show you what that's going to do. By just adding that little bit on the outside and then pushing that towards the white. I create this little shadow as if these rope things are kind of being lifted off the paper. Doesn't that look cool? So I'm gonna go around the whole inside of this area and this white area. I always feel like shading just sort of brings it all together. Now when I run into another tangle, I'm just gonna add shading to the outside of that tangle so that it creates a shadow. And then I'm just gonna go back and I got these little like half areas here. I'm gonna add it to the inside. to the inside. Okay, and then I'm gonna pull that towards that white part in the center. And that just lifts that rope pattern off of the page like it's hovering above something. Look at how cool that actually kind of looks. Then I'm gonna go all along this edge here with just a thin pencil line. And that's going to add even another little shadow, separating this one from this one. And on the opposite side, I'm gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna go around these little orbs, around this large, I can't remember what that was called, it was so many days ago, around those orbs, around these petals. I'll just give that whole thing a little shadow. Okay, now if I wanted to, I could go back and add some decorations in there, but I kind of like how that looks. It almost looks like a little brick wall or a stone wall back there. Isn't that interesting? Oh, I can't wait to see what you guys do with yours because I feel like you probably didn't put it quite where I did. I don't know, we'll see. That was, I think, my scariest compilation. But we did it, and no one's gonna look at this and say, oh, your casual looks slightly off. Like, no, they're not. No, this whole piece looks amazing because it's a bunch of cool little lines and um, we're not worried about it looking perfect. So we have three more, three more to put in these areas. So what my plan is, is I'm going to put all three of them in here. And if I have any little spaces left like this, we're going to fill it with maybe some dark busters or maybe some um, um, Knight's Bridge, you know, like a good background pattern or some flux shapes. So we will fill all of the spaces in the last video. But right now, I think it looks pretty amazing for 28 days of work. So yay, we did it. Thank you for sticking with me through another super tricky tangle. And um, we'll see you tomorrow for day 29. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.